Hi, my name is Rossanne Hoff. I'm the Curator of Education here at the Hastings Museum. And for today's Museum Minute, we are going to talk about Kool-Aid history. Edwin Perkins, the inventor of Kool-Aid, was born in Lewis, Iowa in 1889. He moved to Furnace County, Nebraska when he was four years old. They bought some land and built a sod house and started farming. After about seven years, his family sold their land and moved to a town called Henley. In the town of Henley, his father, David, bought a general store and named it the DM Perkins General Merchandise. So why don't you come inside with me and we'll take a look around. This is a replica of the original general store. Here's a photo of the actual general store. Edwin Perkins is second from the left. We also have this other photo taken inside his father's general store. And in the middle, you see Edwin Perkins. And to his right, your left, is his sister Vesta. And there are a few store employees as well in this photo. Now, what could you buy in a general store? We happen to have some of those things on hand to show you. You could buy bolts of fabric to make your own clothing, or you could buy ready-made clothing. We happen to have a bonnet here. You could buy food items, sweet treats such as Jello, or more necessities such as baking soda and pork and beans. And of course you could buy toys like this old fashioned kaleidoscope and more practical items like stove polish. Edwin spent a lot of time after school and on weekends in the general store and he got a love for products early on. He started creating his own recipes in his mom's kitchen and even sent away for a mail order chemistry set similar to, you, to the one you see here where he could really get crafty. He was pretty good at creating his own recipes and by the age of 25 started his first company, the Perkins Products Company. He even kept an idea scrapbook, kind of like our Pinterest boards today. And this notebook that you see here was his actual notebook and he kept everything in there from recipe ideas, ingredients, packaging, promotions, um, just stuff to inspire him through the years. His wife, Kitty, who you see here in this photo, and this is their engagement photo, she said a simple trip to the grocery store would take hours for Edwin because he would spend a lot of time looking at all the different products on the shelves. World War, World War I ended in 1918, and shortly thereafter, Edwin invented a product called Nixotin Tobacco Treatment. It was a tablet that would help you stop smoking. It was this product that made Edwin realize that he needed more factory space and better access to railroads. So Kitty and Edwin decided to move the Perkins Products Company to Hastings in 1920. Edwin invented over 125 different products in his lifetime. Everything from cleaners, foods, kidney and headache tablets, toothpaste, and Jelly Z, a version of Jell-O. One of those products he invented shortly after he moved to Hastings was called Fruit Smack. Fruit Smack was a flavor liquid that you would put in your water to make it taste good. Well, Fruit Smack was popular, but the problem is it's in a, it comes in a glass bottle. The way they transported things across the country back then was on train. Oftentimes, a glass bottle would break in transit, and it left Edwin and his customers frustrated. So Edwin went back to the drawing board a little bit and decided to create a product similar to Fruit Smack, but maybe without the glass bottle. Well, he was successful, and in 1927, he invented Kool-Aid. You can see here, this is what the original packet of Kool-Aid looked like, a little bit different from the ones we see today. There were six original flavors of Kool-Aid, cherry, orange, grape, strawberry, lemon lime, and Edwin's favorite, raspberry. Kool-Aid was popular almost immediately, and about four years after it was invented, Edwin decided to move his company to Chicago this time, because Chicago had a lot of other food product companies, plus larger factory space and more railroads. So why don't you follow me to Chicago? After Edwin moved Kool-Aid to Chicago, a few major things happened. One was a name change. The sign above me, you see Kool-Aid is spelled A-D-E. That's the original spelling. And then the sign next to it is Kool-Aid spelled A-I-D, and that's the spelling we know today. That's because the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, they are the government organization that regulates all of our food. They said that the ADE was actually false advertisement because that indicated fruit juice in the product. There's no fruit juice in Kool-Aid, and so Edwin changed the spelling to AID, and that's what we know today. You'll also notice that the spelling 
the, although the spelling of the two words changed, not a lot of other things changed. The style of the font is still the same, the colors of the letters are still the same, and there's still that like frosty look to them. And that's because Edwin still wanted people to keep buying his products, so he kept it as similar as he could for brand recognition. Another major thing happened during the Chicago years. Uh, there was this thing called the Great Depression, and basically in the 1930s, a lot of people didn't have extra money, they lost their jobs, housing, um, and so food was kind of tight. Money was definitely tight. People had to make decisions uh, about the things that they could purchase during the Great Depression. And Edwin dropped the price of Kool-Aid from 10 cents to 5 cents, which was actually really smart because he made profit during a time when a lot of companies were going under. In addition to the price reduction and the name change, Ed, right around this time, Edwin came up with this thing called premiums. So why don't you follow me to a premium wall and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Five years after Kool-Aid was invented, Edwin came up with premiums, which were free things you could get when you would buy Kool-Aid. The first premium was a really simple balloon. And back then, Kool-Aid was, pa was packaged with an inner and outer envelope and the balloon would just sit in between the two envelopes. And over time, some of the premiums changed. They got a little fancier, but some of them got too big for the envelope. And so Edwin went to this idea of mailing in your Kool-Aid packets as proof of purchases to get your free thing. And then you would get the premium delivered to you in the mail. And so some of these smaller ones that you see on the wall fit in the envelope, some of them don't. And you'll also notice this one little premium that has a yellow handle. That's actually a razor blade because every child needs a razor blade uh, free when they buy a packet of Kool-Aid. And these are some of the premiums that were in the early Edwin days. The Circus Big Top is one of the staff's personal favorite. I just think it's so neat how they have all of the different animals in there and the it's really literally a three ring circus. And you would, as you bought, more packets of Kool-Aid get more parts to finish your big top circus. Well, Edwin hasn't always owned Kool-Aid. He doesn't own it today. He did sell it to General Foods in 1953. And after General Foods took over, you can see that some of the premiums changed over time. But that's also just because what kids wanted changed over time. And on this whole wall, you'll see a smattering of different products related to some things you might be familiar with, like Bugs Bunny, and there's like the Kool-Aid Man and the Kool-Aid Smiley Face. There's also a remote control car, watches, and, uh, and you'll see also here, the little yellow box in the lower left corner, that is a Kool-Aid point. Eventually, they went away from mailing in the whole packet to the Kool-Aid point system where you just have to cut out the little box and mail those in. General Foods partnered with companies that made products that were popular with kids. So you see here there is this troll doll and earlier you saw Bugs Bunny. Coming up you'll see Barbie. They thought if they partnered with companies that were making things kids already wanted it would be a good way to get children to bug their parents to buy Kool-Aid so then they could get the free cool thing like the SpongeBob you just saw which in turn would generate sales and allow them to keep producing their product. It was really a pretty genius marketing strategy. But you'll notice that all of these things have one thing in common. They all have the Kool-Aid smiley face, the Kool-Aid man, or the Kool-Aid pitcher. And again, that goes back to the brand recognition. They wanted people to recognize that it was Kool-Aid and uh, so they would kind of keep buying their product. In addition to getting the free things with your packets of Kool-Aid, you could also go to the store and buy Kool-Aid merchandise, kind of like when you can do for Frozen today. When you go see the movie in the theater, you can go to the store and get your Elsa doll or your Anna pajamas, that type of thing. And you can still find some Kool-Aid merchandise in stores today. It's not as uh, easily, it, as readily available as it used to be. Um, some of my favorite things you probably saw, the Barbie Kool-Aid stand, to me, is a good one. And of course, there is the Kool-Aid Lip Smackers, because I am a child of the 90s. They did discontinue the premiums, the free things, in 2010. But, like I said earlier, you can occasionally get a Kool-Aid item in the store today.
Like I said earlier, Edwin doesn't own Kool-Aid anymore. He sold it to General Foods in 1953. Edwin passed away in 1961, followed by Kitty in 1977. They are both buried in Parkview Cemetery here in Hastings. But Edwin and Kitty's legacies live on here in Hastings and beyond with every Kool-Aid smile and their philanthropic efforts. They gave money to Hastings College and the Perkins Library is named after the family. They also gave money to Good Samaritan Village and named the Perkins Pavilion after them. They generously donated money here to the Hastings Museum for this Kool-Aid exhibit. And Kitty, Edwin's wife, is from Cambridge, Nebraska, and they gifted money to the town's hospital. The house that Edwin and Kitty lived in while here in Hastings still stands today. It is on the southwest corner of Washington and Bateman near Morton Elementary. I want to thank you for joining us for this Museum Minute. It was a, longer, a little bit longer than a minute, but totally worth it. We have a ton more digital content and educational resources on our website, so please go there, www.hastingsmuseum.org. Thank you.